Let's talk about arithmetic operators in JavaScript. These are the basic math operators that you're probably already familiar with, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In JavaScript, we can use these operators to perform math operation on numbers. For example, I have a variable here called a and it has a value of 4. I also have another variable called b and it has a value of 2. Let's say I want to add these two together. We can use the add operator to do that. So let's say console.log a plus b. This will give us a value of 6. Now we can do the same for the subtract operator. So I can say a minus b and that will give us 2. We can do the same for multiplication. That will give us 8. And finally, I can do the same for divide and that will give us 2. We can also find the remainder of a number using the modulo operator, which is represented by a percent symbol. For example, we can console log 10 modulo 3. This will print the remainder, which is 1. We can do the same for 11 and this will give us 2. Now let's talk about compound assignment operators. These are operators that combine a math operator with an assignment operator so that we can perform the math operation and assign the result to a variable all in one step. For example, let's say we have a variable called x and we've given it a value of 5. Now let's say we want to add 3 to this x variable. The normal way you might think of doing this could be x equals x plus 3. However, you can make this a lot shorter by just saying x plus equal 3. This is basically just a shorter way of doing x equals x plus 3. We can prove that by saying console.log x and we should get 8 in the console. We can do the same for the rest of the arithmetic operators such as subtract, multiply, divide, or modulo. So I'll just duplicate this line and I'll comment out the first one and let's subtract this time. This is the same as x equals x minus 3, which means we'll get 2. We can again duplicate this and we can do it with multiplication. So this is the same as x equals x times 3 and if I save it, we get 15, we can duplicate it again, and we can do it for division. This will give us 1.6 recurring. And finally, we can do it for modulo. So I can say x percent equal 3, and I can put a percent over here. So this is the same as this. If I console log it, we get 2. You'll see this way of modifying numbers a lot throughout your JavaScript journey. So it's best to understand how it works. Finally, let's talk about incrementing and decrementing. Let's say we have a variable called x and we'll set it to 5 again. In JavaScript, there are a lot of cases where you'd want to add 1 to a variable. The regular way you might think of doing that might be x equals x plus 1. Or if you remember the previous compound assignment operator, you'd know you can just say x plus equal 1. However, there is a much shorter way of doing that by using the increment operator. Instead of saying x plus equal 1, we can just say x plus plus. This does exactly the same thing as the code up here and here. If we console log that, you can see it is indeed 6. We can do the same if we want to decrement a number. Let's just use x again, and instead of using plus plus, let's use x minus minus. If we console log it, you can see x has been decremented by 1, giving us 4. Now I do want to show you one more thing before I finish, which is putting the increment operator in front of a variable name. So in this case, I could say plus plus x. If I console log x, I will get 6 again. So you might wonder which one you should use. In most cases, you'll just use x++, but there is some difference that you should know. I'll remove this code and instead I'll add a console log which says plus plus x and another console log which says x++. I'll comment out the second console log for now and let the top one run and see what we get. 
obviously we get a 6 because it's incrementing 5, right? Now let's run the second one and what do you think we'll get this time? If you thought 6, you're wrong because we got 5. This might get you scratching your head because, well, it worked the first time you did it, why not now? Well, it's because of the way JavaScript is executed. When you run the console log up here, JavaScript first triggered the increment operator since it was before x, which led to x changing its value. And down here, JavaScript first console logged x and then incremented it. So technically, x down here has still been incremented. It's just you couldn't see it because console log first read the value of x and then incremented it. We can prove that it's actually been incremented if we console log x and we see first we get 5 because JavaScript first read the value of x without incrementing it and then it increments it and then when we console log it again, it prints the new value of x which is 6. So I hope this wasn't too confusing. If it was, then I highly recommend you repeat that last part. I should mention in most cases you'll just be using x++, but I feel like this is something that you should understand.